Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our ICPE Business Excellent uh, webinar. Today's topic is understanding cultural change and employment employee engagement in times of uncertainty. Our presenter is Denise O'Brien from O'Brien Learning Solutions. And by way of introduction, O'Brien Learning Solutions was established in 2016 by Denise to focus on supporting organizations and individuals through periods of change. Denise has 20 years experience working with large multinational organizations such as General Electric's, Lloyd's Banking Group, St. Andrew's Group, Halifax Bank, and WePro Ireland Limited. Most recently as a business consultant with OMT Global and business owner of O'Brien Learning Solutions. During her time in industry, Denise's roles focused on team facilitation, leadership development, internal consultant, operations management, and change management. Denise's experience also includes the development and design of leadership programs, learning interventions up to senior executive level, and the provision of internal coaching to management at various levels in customer facing client driven roles. Denise works with a variety of clients since transitioning into consultancy in both the private and the public sector. Her work with large UK and US best based firms ensures that Denise has a wide range of practical experience to draw from and to share with those groups and individuals with whom she works. Denise is passionate about successful change integration and the development of leaders and their followers. Denise holds a private coaching practice whereby all of her skills, accreditations and experience help individuals to move successfully through periods of change in their lives. For today's session, Denise will address the topics of how the changes in working practices have impacted the working culture in Ireland, what this means for you and your team, and how this is linked to employee engagement. The ground rules for today, Denise will present for about 30 minutes before opening up the discussion for exploration. Everybody is muted. Please post your questions or your comments to the chat function. Alternatively, please send me your question and I can ask this on your behalf. And if we encounter problems with broadband, we, will, we may need to pause the camera. Today's session is being recorded. And just now I will pass you over to Denise and we will get started. Thank you very much indeed, Cloda, for your kind and wonderful introduction. Um, that is my career in a nutshell, everybody. So that's my, my full CV. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And thanks to Cloda and Grania at the ICBE for giving me this opportunity today to meet you all. Um, some people here I have met before, some people I've worked with had the pleasure of working with and uh, some of you I, I won't know and I won't know anything about you and vice versa. So i um, absolutely thrilled to be here today and excited to be talking about my favorite topics, which are, you know, change and the engagement of employees. Um, so, yeah, as Claude was saying, like how I arrived at this point in my life and my career um, was that I did spend almost 20 years there. In fact, that was a 20 year period um, in financial services. And I had the opportunity about five years ago after um, a kind of a plethora of redundancies in our company to start up my own business, um, which I have done. Um, and my experience in industry was split kind of into two halves, like almost a decade in leadership development, internal consultancy and coaching, and then into um, operations management. And um, for the latter part of my career, it was change management. So I have this unique blend of, you know, uh, seeing the operation from kind of both sides and understanding what employees need to feel engaged and to be on board with any kind of strategic and day to day objectives. So I'm very passionate about helping businesses, teams, uh, senior leaders to appreciate the value of employee engagement um, and helping people to to, co to go along with with a, a change agenda. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. Um, I'm from Clare, as I said earlier, I'm close to the coast and I'm thinking of heading off there um, later on today if the weather um, continues as it is. So welcome everybody. It's great to have you here. Um, so yeah, very briefly, what we're going to talk about today um, is I'm going to actually go back to basics. We have a very, very short time together and um, it's, it's a time for us to really just take a snapshot of 
what's going on at the moment. Um, when we talk about employee engagement, what are we actually talking about? And the same with organizational culture. You know, it's a, it's, it can be a bit of a, a wishy-washy topic and seen a lot of the times as something that HR do or look after. You know, I'm, you know this is some of the stuff I've come across in my career, um, which couldn't be further from the truth, by the way. And um, we'll just look a little bit about change, what's been happening over the pandemic over the last 12 months. I'll talk to you a bit about the model of um, cultural change navigation that I use with my clients. I'll tell you a few uh, free resources you can use after today if you're interested, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. So that's the plan anyway. Um, I, it's it's going to be a bit of a whistle stop tour, but I've just picked out a few key points that I think will be interesting that will help to generate discussion that might spark some thinking in your own mind. Um, and what I would say is note anything as we go through it, because I would love to hear from you at the end. I really love to hear any creative spark that has been ignited um, by listening to what I have to say and what your, your peer group might be sharing in the chat. Um, if you feel inspired at any point to share anything in the chat, please do. I absolutely love um, interaction. Um, I, I generally don't talk at people for for this length of time, but um, you know, this is this is where we're at in, in the in the Zoom world. So I'm happy to be here and to be doing this with you today. Um, so yeah, uh, Claude has already gone through all the basics, but one thing I would add um, is if you can just allow yourself now to arrive into this session and be here now, that would be wonderful. Um, and I'd invite you to give yourself this time distraction free if you can. Um, a big part of you wants to be here, you've arrived here, you've signed up, you've made it. Um, it's a short period of time and the challenge I think for all of us at the moment is to allow ourselves time distraction free. Um, and you know, I would invite you to maybe challenge yourself to do that now if you can. So let's do this and let's go for it. Um, so. A question for you then, I'm curious really about who I have here, what's going on, why you're here, and I can't get to know you all today. So I would usually, you know, ask people to introduce themselves and do all that kind of stuff. So we're not going to be doing that today. But what I would like to do is to hear from you one word that best describes the levels of employee engagement in your team at the moment. Um, and just to put any comments that come to mind in the, in the chat box. And if you're unclear, you know, um, because you haven't been together as a team in a while, then please feel free to share that. So if you're like, I really don't know, haven't been in the office or yeah, we're all, we're all working together. It's all going swimmingly well. Um, yeah, mixed. I'm not surprised about that. Very mixed, okay. Um, yeah, so there will be, yeah, not sure. And this is what I was sensing when I was putting this content together based on the discussions I've had with my clients over the last 12 months, a roller coaster. Yeah, something missing, um, poor at the moment. Yeah, strong but challenging, good. Okay, it's good to hear that some teams out there are feeling a strong sense of engagement, but obviously there's challenges still there. Marius, thank you and welcome aboard. Marius, good to see you again here. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I've been hearing from the clients that I've been working with and I've done some like, primary research, like a couple of my clients allowed me to gather some of their employees in little focus groups, because I was really curious, you know, to find out what's been happening, how are people doing, what's been going on. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are feeling, you know, just disjointed. And one of the big things that came out was for people who have joined the company during the pandemic. So I don't know if you've had any new starters, if people have joined, they're just really feeling it, like they're really feeling disengaged um, and their employers, so their managers, their leaders are, are really concerned that, you know what, they're missing out on our culture. So they don't know what it's like to work in our organization because they started in their living room or in their kitchen and they're still there, you know, or in their home office. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's resonant with what I've been hearing. So let's explore this further. Um, so understanding employee engagement. Um, I have this a definition here that I like, um, so let's read through it. So what is it? A positive attitude held by the employee towards the organization and its value. 
an engaged employee is. So what are they? They're aware of the business context and they work with colleagues to improve performance within the job for the benefit of the organization. So the organization must work to develop a nurture engagement, which requires a two-way relationship between employer and employee, right? So um, yeah, so like at the moment, what we're hearing is it's a bit iffy. We don't know, people have been disjointed. People have been working away from each other. They've been working apart. Um, and in some cases, then people are, they're still there, they're still on the factory floor, they're still in, in the production environment for a lot, of, a lot of organizations, but the stress levels have gone through the roof. You know, this is what I'm hearing from some of my clients who are, who have been busier during um, COVID, but they're just trying to manage um, employee engagement through um, providing like wellness interactions for their employees and things like that, because they are aware of the pressure that people are under. Um, so the big one here for me with this definition is like when, a, when an employee is engaged, they work to improve the performance within the job for the benefit of the organization. I mean, that's kind of a magic formula. Um, so we'll just touch today on, you know, maybe ways that we can do that. And um, what is it that drives that type of behavior? I, call, I like to call it, which is in the research, I haven't, I haven't coined this phrase, but if you think about it as organizational citizenship, um, and it's where studies have shown when employees are engaged at a, at a higher level, they are you're more the organization is more likely to get what's called more discretionary effort out of the employees because they are willing to to go the extra mile. So this is the it's the ideal scenario. You know, we all want that. We all want to work in an environment like that. We want to be a leader of teams that inspires this type of engagement. Um, and we've all heard the stats, you know, so I'm not here, none of this is going to be very shocking, you know, um, companies with high employee engagement are 21% more profitable, uh, up to 41% lower absenteeism with um, highly engaged workforces, uh, the organizational citizenship and discretionary effort is there, better customer service, um, and just some figures here, it is in dollars, but you know, it costs thousands, we all know this, to train, hire, recruit, replace employees who can be hard enough to attract in the first place. You know, so we're trying to attract the best talent, we get it, and then we see it walking out the door and we're not really sure why that's happening. And that's been the case with some of the clients I've been working with, um, especially those that have had to kind of ramp up over a short period of time. So they're doing really well, they've ramped up, they've had to hire a lot of people, and then all of a sudden they're kind of hemorrhaging talent because the environment, the culture, and we'll talk about that now, there's something off, as I think someone said in the comments there, it might've been Carl, that it's fine, but there's something not quite right, you know? And it's really up to us if we're in the business of leading people, coaching, you know, leading by example, we really need to understand what that, you know, feeling a bit off is actually all about. Um, and how do we do that? Well. One of the things we need to look at is flexibility in the workplace. Um, so one of the studies I looked at recently is that it came out, you know, this was in 2020, but 83% um, of Irish workers would like to continue to work from home after the pandemic. Um, so before the pandemic hit, employee like flexibility and um, flexible working hours, policies around that was always a key, you know, a kind of a top player in helping employees to feel valued and having a bit more of a say in what their working life looks like after this it's going to be like up there and up front and center so it's a bit of, there's a bit of a question mark over it at the moment with a lot of the clients of mine that I'm talking to but I'm encouraging people to start really planning for you know around the legislation um what is it that employees are entitled to do you need 100% of your workforce to be, you know, on the office floor? Um, is there the ability to provide this flexibility that people will want? There's no question about it. So it's worth, you know, looking at, okay, in terms of our employee engagement strategy, how are we addressing this? You know, what are we doing? Have we had the conversations about it? Are we all still scratching our heads a little bit? Um, and I would encourage people just have the conversations, you know, start talking to your employees, start, start talking to your team members, your, your peers, your leaders, your, your whatever level you're at, 
first of all, start with your own peer group. You know, what's the sense around this? How are we going to handle it? What are we, what are we going to provide? What are we looking for? Because all of that will lead into just um, the vibe, right? The organizational culture is in, in layman's terms is the vibe, you know, so what's the vibe like around here? Um, and one of these quotes that you've probably heard a lot, but I like to use a lot is from Peter Drucker. So he was a, a leadership guru, um, done plenty of studies, written many books around leadership strategy. And this quote, I think, sums it all up. So culture eats strategy for breakfast. So he's um, accredited with that quote, and you've probably heard that before. Um, but what this means is that you can have the, the best procedures in place, maybe, you know, uh, process improvement, work streams. And this is where I come in and work with clients, you know, and it's around, okay, but what's it really like to work around here, though? I know you're saying you have the values on the wall, you have the strategy on paper. Um, but if I was to take someone off the floor and ask them, you know, what's it like to work here? Do you like working here? How do you get on with your manager? Um, what's the vibe like? You know, that's what we're talking about. Um, so definition for, the, for anyone that likes the academic definitions. Very simple one here, the first one, the way we do things around here. Um, for a bit more of an in-depth definition, uh, we have the underlying values, beliefs, and principles that serve as the foundation for an organization's management system, as well as the set of management practices and behaviors that both exemplify and reinforce these basic principles. So it's not just having the values on the wall, but it's having you know people walk in the walk and talk in the talk. So it's the spirit and the letter of the values, the vision, the mission, the behaviors. Um, and when all that comes together really well, it's it's a beautiful thing, you know. Like we, we've probably all been there and seen that and worked for a team for an organization who got this right. Um, and in my experience, it's gone back a while, but you know, it would have been for one of the financial services providers that I worked with, where we um, we we were like, you know, uh, uh, we had a great. Um, senior leader actually with a great CEO and he, he was a bit of a character but he he was very much into simplifying the organizational strategy um down to you know the most junior levels in the organization like everybody knew what the main strategic um, objectives were and how they played a part in that and how what they did coming into work day in day out answering the phones or doing whatever they were doing made a difference you know and there was a, a whole development piece around that um yeah it worked really well um i don't know d i think you might remember that um i'm sure she was part of that team as well at some point so when it works well it works really well and it can be done um yeah that's who i'm talking about d yeah so jerry absolute character um but, but did a lot of things absolutely right so when people are on board and they know what difference they make and they feel valued because this is happening here. The management team have been skilled, are trained. They know how to lead others. They know how to help people to feel valued, which is a huge part of it. Um, that's when the magic happens. So when we're talking about culture, we have the iceberg here, which is always a great analogy. Um, so on the top, the tip of the iceberg, what we can see is the way we say we get things done around here. So as I said, the vision strategy, you can have it all in place. It can be beautiful. You can have amazing graphics, wonderful branding. You know, you can, it can be themed. It can be visible. But the way we really get things done is what will actually drive performance. So it would be the beliefs, the perceptions, the norms. So yeah, we say we go home, we finish at you know half five, but there's a there's an unwritten expectation that people are actually kind of available whenever we need them. Um, and I know that that has been something that has been an issue over this pandemic is people are finding, and it, maybe they've got better at it as time has gone on, certainly. But when do I log off? You know, like when do I say, well, well, I didn't see your email because I I switched off my laptop. You know, is that okay? Is that okay? And if it's not okay, then there's some kind of norm that's not really been talked about, you know, um, and who sets that? Who, who, who sets the example? You know, um, like they say, like cultures don't change, but individuals do. 
and behavior changes. And that's where, again, the likes of me would come in and help to look at, okay, what are the issues that you're experiencing? So, you know, generally speaking, people would ask me to come in when the vision, the strategy, the goals, the mission, all that, it's not been realized. So there's either they can't attract the right talent, they're losing the right talent, they're not hitting operational targets, um, uh, they need to invest in a m more robust management structure. Um, people just aren't generally aren't getting along. You know, there's some kind of toxic environment in, in, the, in the workplace. Now that can be hard to identify and it can be even harder to admit. Um, so it takes a certain type of leader um, to realize that and to talk to someone like me about it, but it does happen. So that's just, again, to give you an idea, right? When we're thinking about, so we've looked at engagement, what is engagement? When we're talking about organizational culture, it can, as I said, it can be a bit fluffy at times, um, but this is what we're actually talking about. So it's the difference for me that makes the difference. So it's, it's taken people, you know, it's a cliche, but from good to great, you know, it's taken companies from being average to the award-winning type of companies that people want to work for. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. So it's well worth considering. Um, and again, when I looked at this over the last while and I was doing my own blogs and things like that for my website, um, this, this kind of struck me, you know, um, and again, this is probably nearly, well, it's, it's, it's at least six months old when I came across this research, but 20%, so one in five people work from home reported feeling lonely and um, a lack of sense of belonging. So again, you know, what I've been hearing from the clients that have been, you know, generous enough to share with me, you know, their honest thoughts about how they're finding, you know, leadership being a bit of a struggle during the pandemic, um, what they're concerned about, you know, what they're kind of fearful about. This does come up. It's kind of like, how do we, re how do we get people to reconnect with each other? You know, we used to have a great atmosphere in the office, like the banter was great. Um, it was a great place to work. You know, we had like Friday fun days. We had all that, you know, in person, these things seem to work a lot better. You know, everybody I know is is done with, you know, the Zoom coffees, the quizzes. Like, you know, I, I think they've just, <laughs> they've nearly had their day like at this stage. Um, so, Again, a question, and I would always say, you know, ask your ask your teams, ask your team leaders to have a chat with their teams and come back, have a little focus group. Most people I work with, um, sometimes they bring me in to do that because I'm like an independent voice. But I would say, you know, have the conversation as well yourself. They're nearly afraid to ask the question because they're afraid of the answer because they don't know if they're going to be able to do anything about it. So it, it becomes this like, self-fulfilling prophecy and then people go well god nobody's even asked us how we are how we're doing here you know we're we're we're, we're hitting the targets um and you know nobody's asking us how that's we're his doing. business so i think someone just came off mute there did they yeah perfect thanks, thanks. yeah perfect. yeah Thanks. So um, what I would love to know, again, I'm curious just to know, how do you think now that we've talked through that, and I, that was very high speed, um, but how has the pandemic impacted on the culture of your organization? If, I, if you had to answer that question today, like what would your thoughts be? Do you think it's, it's had an impact? Um, is it visible? Can you sense it? Um, have you any kind of idea around, you know, the vibe in your team and your organization? So that feel different now? Um, has it been impacted? Any thoughts or comments would be welcome as always. Um, yeah, so I'll continue on here. I'll let you chat if you feel so inclined to do so. Um, so lastly, right, so we've, we've looked at our employee engagement levels and we have talked about culture, the vibe, um, seeing you know, some comments around the vibe and the culture being negatively impacted. Um, sense of belonging is low, morale is suffering. Yeah, and disconnect. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks guys for sharing that. You know, and like for me coming from where I'm coming from and the work that I do, I love doing this work. And it really affects me to hear that that's how people are feeling in the workplace. You know, but there is hope 
you know, and there are things that we can do to to help to re resolve that sense of, you know, discombobulation that people are feeling or apathy at this stage or, you know, just being a bit tired with it all. Um, like what I would say is to remember that things have changed, okay? Um, so we have taken something and it has become different, you know, and we need to, first of all, acknowledge that, you know, so to, 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 when we're talking to our teams, obviously, you know, be open, be honest. We've all had um, to deal with a change that we didn't choose, okay? So when I'm talking to people about change and managing change, um, yeah, so D, thanks. So big difference in morale, if, depending on whether people are working from home or on site. Yeah, so there's a load of, you know, personal um, preferences around that that are either making people feel more engaged or less engaged, absolutely. Um, so we've had a, we had a shocking change to deal with over 12 months ago when we all realized, a lot of us, not everybody, I mean, some people, as I said, business businesses stayed, you know, pretty much the same, um, maybe got busier. And, you know, a lot of people had to rethink, you know, okay, I'm going to be working from home. How long is that going to be for? Do I need to, do I need an office? Like, what am I going to be doing? And because we've had that to deal with, every single person regardless of whether they've had to work from home or not. Um, during this pandemic, we've all been through this change curve. And this is something that is very popular when we talk about change. It's a model that had its basis in, in psychotherapy actually, but it made its way into the business world um, in, in the 70s and 80s. Um, but yeah, basically what happens is we get a bit of a shock, which we did. We, this process is not straightforward by the way we can bounce to and fro and back and forward between anger you know depression what happens and what i've seen sometimes in organizations that go through maybe mergers acquisitions takeovers where the culture changes and it's it really isn't the way it used to be and the way we do things around here now i really don't like it anymore so some people exit so they're like yeah you know i'm out um, or the people, the worrying part piece of that is people who feel that way but don't exit and they stay down there at the bottom uh, hostile and they can be the kind of what I would call the mood hoover. So the negative person in the team that is stayed, has stayed for probably all the wrong reasons. But anyway, that's all part of the change curve. Um, so just in terms of coming up and out of that then, we, we would like people to be at a case of, you know, dipping a toe into it, you know, acceptance, problem solving and integration. And I think for most people, you know, we've had to go through that whether we liked it or not. You know, I had to take all my business online. You know, I used to spend a lot of time on the road, driving, you know, staying away from home. Um, and part of that has been lovely and relaxing, but I miss, you know, the live gig, you know, I miss sitting down with people, you know, coaching, face-to-face, -face, group work. So everybody has been impacted. Um, so it's just worth bearing in mind when you do go to talk to people, it's worth acknowledging. Yeah, we've been through a lot. Look how far we've come, you know? And I think that's always a great conversation starter, you know, because people can be quite defensive around, you know, change and how it's impacted them if they don't feel they can trust the person that they're talking to. You know, and that's a whole other day's work around building trust among employees, you know, um, but that's a big part of it. So what I would say to you as you leave here today is to look at, you know, three, three points in particular. So what changes have taken place to the way we do things around here? You know, so let's be realistic. What has changed? You know, is there anything we're, is there an, a, an elephant in the room that we're not really talking about? Is, are there things we've tried to sweep under the carpet? Are there things that have got better? You know, what, what have changes positive and negative, by the way? Um, and have we been able to assess the impact of this on employee engagement? Do we know, or is it still a bit of a finger in the air? Um, and what could we do about that? So what needs to be addressed now to prevent any negative consequences? So I find, you know, the longer things go untalked about or, you know, People start to make up their own stories, you know, paranoia can kind of set in and um, that's what you don't want. You don't want employees left in a vacuum where they need to make up their own stories about whether or not their management team cares about them. 
um, and what's going to happen when we all go back to work. And I know you mightn't be able to answer all those questions right now, but sometimes like not having the answers, but still having the conversation is still a really, really good thing when you're talking about engaging employees. So guys, before we wrap up, just to let you know that what I do is I work with a very simple model um, called Evolve, uh, which has three S's. Um, signposting, supporting, and making people feel safe, so psychological safety when it comes to being on board with the organizational strategy, being engaged, um, working through change, delivering great results. Um, and basically how that works is that the signposting needs to be really done by the senior team. The mid-management layer are the ones who, who ultimately need to provide the support that the, the, the frontline or the day-to-day -day workers need. And everybody then, all employees need to feel, yeah, I feel safe, I feel secure, I feel valued, I feel I can trust the management team. So that's the model I use that I've developed based on my experience and that I work with my clients on. So, you know, the, the, the solutions are based on where a client is at in that in that process it's not a one size fits all um for me um you know it can range from as i've said here leadership or executive coaching to team development um webinars like this for teams um and then just cultural change called consultancy so you know some of the clients i'm working with at the moment are trying to introduce stronger you know behavioral and performance management frameworks for example um so anything that involves raising the bar around performance getting people engaged um and creating that culture that everybody wants to be part of um that's what i do and um it's very hard to explain that sometimes like i'd say nobody in my family knows what i do um but hopefully that has made sense to you today um, I would love to talk to you if you feel like this has sparked your interest. So you can book a call on my website. Um, there is a free gap analysis tool that you can do on my website as well. And um, that will give you an oversight of this model. Um, and you can sign up to the newsletter and I will be publishing like um, survey results, for example, um, in the next uh, couple of weeks that I did with some contacts on LinkedIn around employee engagement. So. All of that is free and I would love to chat with you more after today. Um, so that's me done talking. Um, so I will hand it back. Claude is going to manage the Q&A now. <laughs>